This week on Sail Away, we take a little break from our search for a liveaboard sailboat to take you on a road trip to Key West. Do you want to sail away? I want to sail away. Do you want to sail away with me? Cheers, everybody. By cheers, I mean coffee. coffee. It's 10 a.m. We are doing a little road trip to Key West. Our fifth anniversary is, I guess, next week, right? That's what this trip is for. This is just a uh, adult adulting trip. So we're uh, cruising down US 1 right now. So we've got two and a half hours to Key West. I think we're almost into the actual keys. Yeah. Right? Is that what that is? Oh my god, look at that thing. Jesus. Jeez, that thing's huge. We were looking at those other fish, the other long ones down there. Totally missed him. So there's a there's a really cool song out there. 
Uh, you can actually buy on iTunes called Mile Marker Zero. Yeah. I forget who sings it. I think he's real famous. He's really famous. And one of the first things that he does in the song is get a uh, daiquiri. daiquiri. Um, do, I think yeah. technically I only got the daiquiri. Well, yeah, but they call these daiquiris. <laughs> My more for zero, check it out. It won't be sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this drink is good. How's your drink? On the floor. <laughs> Lauren got distracted by the uh, the cock. <laughs> you choked on that chicken. He'll get. He'll probably drink it. <laughs> At least you got that souvenir cup. <laughs> This is Mallory Square. Right, everybody uh, comes to see the sunsets every day. Almost. Matt, this one passes for a Use us, please. Oh, come on, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. They like come and they want go. I said, come on, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. They like come and they want go. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> me say they, 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 oh. oh. Daylight comes and we want go home. Captain Tony's. This was uh, Hemingway's hangout when it was Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe's would have you believe that they were Hemingway's hangout, which they were under name only. This is the place where he actually drank whiskey. Where do you think? Probably in the right there. It's gotta be a fire hazard. USS Hyman. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the southernmost point. It's right there. And that's the line to stand in front of the southernmost point. So we are gonna come back tomorrow morning. So I think we're gonna go hit Hemingway House. See what the deal is there. Go tour. Yeah. Alright. Should be Hemingway House right up here on the right. It's where Hemingway lived and wrote a bunch of his most famous stuff. In 1931, Ernest Hemingway and his new wife Pauline Pfeiffer moved into this house, a gift from her father. 
They lived there until their divorce in 1940, and it was where Hemingway wrote some of his most famous novels. Said it was a one acre lot, the biggest lot in Key West. That cat drinking fountain is a urinal from the original Sloppy Joe's. When the uh, landlord raised the rent and they moved to the new Sloppy Joe's, all the patrons hauled all the crap from one to the other. And somehow that urinal got yanked out and Hemingway put it in here in his property to spite his wife. He said he'd pissed away enough money at Sloppy Joe's that he was going to take the urinal. Right. So. Take the urinal. <laughs> she built that pool to spite him because he was running around with his mistress in Europe. Took out his boxing ring. So he countered with a urinal and then she just dressed it up and made it fancy. She kind of won. She definitely won. She got the house. There's the lighthouse. Hemingway used to use the lighthouse to find his way home when he had a few too many at Sloppy Joe's. How many toes do you have? Do you know? Do you care? In the grand scheme of things? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My bad. Goddamn tourists. <laughs> I just found out this is Etta James. How you doing, Etta? She's good. Anyway, we were so fascinated. Not sure if you picked up on that, but all these cats at Hemingway House have six toes. And being such famous six-toed cats, they live really well. They've got their own vet, they got a ton of houses, and tons of adoring fans. When Hemingway's second wife, Pauline Pfeiffer, found out about his affair with Martha Gellhorn, she ripped out Hemingway's boxing ring and replaced it with an exorbitantly expensive pool. He then flung a penny at her, saying, well, you've spent my last penny, you might as well have it. So she embedded it in the concrete. Do it. Maybe at the end. Do it. You'll be a legend. Five and then strip down and jump in. Yeah. Okay. What's up, kitty kitty? Mm-hmm. He's like, no, not actually coming to you. And that right up there was his writing studio. And I believe it used to be connected to the house, and they've since taken that down. He is the Zen master of no bullshit writing. They went to the river, it was there. <laughs> Thank you.
here we are back for sunset number two. Kind of found our way down to a different spot today. She's a mother to all. Shine and linger And girls will come In festive clothes And the boys will wait a gazing And birds will sing From tops of trees And sound like There's a whole bunch of heads. He busts. Was, he was a free, educated African American and a successful barber in St. Augustine. A little field of these things. Notable, Notable conks. <laughs> Make sure to take a black sails. For the record. <laughs> Lauren's very concerned for the child on his back. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Glad he wasn't just carrying around some you know, baby legs. <laughs> The valley's green will age with me. Its dirt will shine. 